Okay, I know what you guys are thinking. Not another Prusa i3 Mark III interview. I've already seen them all from various people like Tom and Joel. But in this video, I wanted to put forward my thoughts and perspective on the Prusa i3 Mark III, as well as my interview with Joseph Prusa at the New York World Mega Fair, which was incredible to meet him, finally, I must admit. So if you want to see the interview, it's going to start after the intro. And if you want to see my thoughts, you can see the timestamp in the description or just watch it after the interview. Let's get started. How's it going, guys? Angus here from Makers oh, Muse. I got into the intro. I, I was this. That'll be on camera. Flick. No. How's it going, guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. I'm here with Joe. Joseph Prusa from Prusa Research. Dude, how are you going? Hi, how is it going? Very good. I have the second day, it's pretty hot. Yeah, I, I feel like we are in the heated build chamber. Yeah, so if you're printing ABS, now's the day to do it. <laughs> yeah, yes, you, this is the only day you can do it outside. Yeah. But isn't this the first uh, video which we do together? Yeah, it is. It is actually. Wonderful. Yeah, so high, high five. Sick. Um, and today's the release of your, your Mark III. Yeah. Version printer. So tell me about the, the i3 Mark III. So previously known as Mark X. Oh, <laughs> so it's going to be three times the price of the normal model. No, no, no. <laughs> no. But, but we, have, we added features, not removed them. That's, there you go. So the Mark III is special. We have a couple new features. Uh, you've probably have seen it on Twitter already. But this is one of the, the highlights. It's a flexible spring steel uh, sheet, which is powder coated with PI. That means that it, there, there's no glue and yeah. it is very hard to scratch. This is just part of the story. The, the bed has 25 magnets, which right. are high curry temperature, which last up to 150 degrees Celsius. Wow. Embedded just 0.2 millimeters below the traces. So it sticks to the bed. And yeah, that's how, that's how we print. That's one of the nice features. So, so you would have gone, the, what version heat bed is this now? So, uh, well, as, as you might know, we, we like to, you know, uh, do po poke a little at the Chinese clone. So this yeah. is Mark 52. <laughs> so no, no one knows what's going on, no. what happened between 42 and 52. It'll always remain a mystery. Okay, so that's important, but also the biggest thing these days is uh, reliability and if things go wrong during the print. So what's the latest for that in the Mark III? So uh, we added a couple things, and a few of them is because of the new uh, new printer board. This is Einze. We co-developed right. co it with Ultimachine, Machine, which is our long uh, long-standing partner since uh, the Mark Zero. <laughs> uh, this one is special because this has Trinamic drivers, 2130. Uh, they, they they are not like on the Sigma. They are connected directly with SPI to to the main board, so we can we can configure all the. All the cool stuff, yeah. and this enables us to do a couple a couple things. Uh, we can, well, it has 256 micro stepping, so we can actually run really, really in stealth mode, basically. Yeah. That's why we added the knock to a fan, but yes. also in in the loud mode, which <laughs> is what we are printing in right now. Yeah. We can detect uh, skip steps, which basically translate into shifted layers. So it's and doing that with no other sensors, just the motor drivers? Yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, we can demo it later. I will uh, hold the carriage and it will rehome and then continue printing. That's incredible. Yeah. So that's one of the things. It can also de help us detect jammed extruder. We can measure voltage. We, yeah. we can find out if the fuse was blown. And, and, and you have fuses as well. Oh, yeah. We, ha we have fuses. Yeah. Also, um, there is a neat little thing which we call power panning. It is actually yeah. hardware. So there's one part in the power supply, which measures the drop in the mains, mains voltage. Right. And second part here, where, where are comparators, which immediately turns off the heaters, uh, the heated bath and the nozzle. Right. So they don't suck uh, the, the power from the caps in the power supply. And we can use this power for up to 300 milliseconds to park the nozzle and store the position. And then when you uh, turn the power back on, you can continue printing. So that would be in the event where you get a, a power loss. You, know, you lose power from the wall, yeah, the machine I, I, can I recover. I heard that in Australia that there was a lot of uh, power grid failures recently. Yeah, depending on the, uh, the area of the country, but absolutely, there was a lot of grid yeah, failures. Yeah. And so if you have a print going for 25 hours and it fails the last few hours, yes. you can recover. Yes, you yeah. can. Yeah. Yes, you can. 
Uh, also, it, it is it is a bit modified to accommodate for our laser sensor, which should be somewhere around here. Okay. Yeah, so tell so tell me what this does. So this is basically a high-end uh, sensor from Laser Mouse. Right. So it not only pr uh, detects the presence of the filament, but it also detects uh, its movement. So we can also demo that later when we cut the filament and it goes in, we find out that there's no more filament. So it printer pauses and uh, unrolls the rest of the filament and then you can put the new one in. So the machine, so basically if this roll ran out and you're asleep, yeah. the machine would park itself, yeah. give you a little warning and then wait for you to come back and, yes, exactly. and fix it. But also it's contactless. When we try to do filament sensors with switches, the sure. filament just grinds them off and they right. stop working. Okay. And if the if the extruder champs, the printer doesn't know that, but we can, as the as this can detect movement, we can find out if uh, the, no, uh, the, the the hot end is jammed. Absolutely. And for example, offer a cold pull, so you can try to okay. s to recover from those failed situa situations. That, that's a big thing as well, because with the mechanical switches, yeah, you have it where it just grinds the filament and yeah. it's, it thinks it's still printing. But with yeah. this, yes, no. exactly. Yeah. And well, when we are talking about the extruder, we have another nice addition. We we use Bontech for the multi-material, right? And so we we we, we, we love them. So Bontech is also included on the Mark III. So for those who don't know about the advantage of the Bontech, it's the the really high high yeah. grip extruder. The, the the point is that the filament is uh, driven from both sides. For sure. So you don't. So the grip is extremely good, mm. and it improves the flexible filament printing drastically. That's the thing as well. A lot of people, they, they want to print TPUs, they want yes. to print these experimental filaments, yes. and traditionally, it'll just can't start coming out the side of the extruder yes. and all that sort of thing. So yeah, that's a, that's a big, big step for compatibility. And again, I can, I can continue and continue. We, uh, at, the, at the extruder, uh, we have the Pinda Pro, which is induction sensor, yes. uh, which is right now pretty standard. But induction sensors have a little problem that when they heat up, uh, the the sensing distance changes with yes. the heat. Yes. So, uh, for example, if you if you change the the plastic between PLA ABS often, you you sometimes have to adjust the the, the, the distance between the. I have noticed that. that before. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So when as we have the thermistor inside the the tip of the pin dump, right. uh, we can actually have a table of temperatures and adjustments, yeah. so you don't have to touch it. Yeah. So it's just it's just taking that extra step towards usability. Yeah. One less thing that can go wrong. Yeah. yeah so tell me about the frame. I mean, it's. Uh, the aluminum extrusions, I reckon, in terms of rigidity, are going to add quite a bit to the original rods and also the assembly process. Yes, well, the, the, a lot of people complain about the, the threaded rods. Sure. So, yeah, we, we figured that we can try out the aluminum extrusions because there were a lot of, uh, a lot of other printers using it. Yes. But we, we thought that it's actually quite hard to, to get the frame built, so it's very nice. So we, we mix both of those together, so you get nice uh, sleek frame with pre-drilled uh, pre holes, so you just uh, tighten the extrusion uh, to it, and you don't have to measure or square anything. It just yeah. comes out perfect. And there are uh, steel sheets on the front and back, which uh, nicely holds everything together. Of and of course, I mean, going back to the original Mark II, you, you've got that XY skewing detection. Is yes. that still is that still featured it, here? It, it is still here, but thanks to the, the, the var variation which is possible is much slower. Yeah. So the 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 process is much quicker. Okay. So yeah, we just much improved. We just check everything is okay and most of the time it is. Yeah. And we, we give feedback to the user. And also um, the the mesh bed leveling we had nine points on the on the Mark II S, yes. where we, we interpolated into seven by seven grid, but here, as we have the steel sheet over a whole area, we can basically probe unlimited times, sure. so get much nicer, uh, much nicer mesh bed leveling. Yeah. Uh, only the places where the magnets are, we cannot, uh, we we cannot probe, okay. but yeah. but they are on the edges, and we we have map of those, so we we can compensate yeah. for that. Fantastic. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't mind testing one at some point, but oh, yeah. <laughs> and, well, possibly. Also, and it's still, it's the 599 kit. Sorry, how much, what's the kit price? Uh, so, uh, we are still keeping Mark II S. Yep. Uh, we okay. actually, we actually shipped the Mark III uh, to the Make Magazine in July. Okay, uh, they, cool. they were doing the tests early. Yeah. And I, I, I think they will have the, the very similar print uh, quality score. This is sure. just, 
the not added convenience. Sure. So, so, so we are keeping the Mark II S, yeah. and it's uh, going to sell at five ninety nine, so which is one hundred okay. bucks less. Wow. And okay. the Mark III is just fifty bucks more, so seven forty nine. Cool. And you you can have upgrade. Unfortunately, it's not full upgrade. We tried, but we had to use twenty four volts. Sure. And 24 volts means we you would need to replace all electronics. Yes. And the new frame also. So basically, you would get a new printer. So we we, we have an upgrade which is called Mark 2.5. Yeah. Which gives you the the magnetic bed. We will have a separate version for 12 volts, and gives you the new extruder with the bone tech, with the Noctua, with the new uh, with the new induction pro, yes. and also with the the optical filament sensor. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Joe. It's so good to actually have an interview with you finally. Yeah, thanks for coming. That was a pleasure. So, should we do a demo now? Yeah, let's do it. So, um, let's just go ahead. <laughs> okay, what do I think about the original Prusa i3 Mark III? Well, Joseph and his team may have come up with the most important desktop 3D printer of 2017. And I'm not saying that to suck up to Joseph because. If you've seen my review of the Prusa i3 Mark II, I was probably one of the few people that really ripped into a few aspects of it and took my sweet time to review that printer. The thing that makes this machine important isn't so much that it's a good 3D printer, it's more the fact that it has features that we need to press this community forward. So let me put it into perspective, Joseph's been making the the i3 design for several years now, many, many years. So why are we still seeing machines that come out with very little difference to the original i3 kit he put together those years ago? Well, it's quite simple, the race to the bottom. Now, at the start of this year, I put together a video on my predictions for 2017 in the 3D printing space, and one of my predictions, which I didn't want to make, was the race to the bottom. And we started to see that more and more as companies like Banggood and Gearbest get together and sell these huge kits from these Chinese companies en masse, from companies like TiVo, Creality, Tronxy, and a million others, to people all around the world, based off, originally, open source plans, either from Joseph or others. Which is fine in some aspects, because I do believe in empowering creativity through 3D printing, but it has, in a way, stagnated our community because we haven't seen these machines move from a kind of hobby into something that's really reliable. There's still that gap between machines that you build and uh, get quite low at a low cost to machines that you just get out of a box and expect to work. But the i3 Mark III changes that. This machine now has so many features like the filament detection and the, the mesh bed leveling, and the removable flexible plate. These are all features that have been sporadically in 3D printers at low price points, but now they're in one machine. And yes, you can argue till the cows come home that the i3 Mark III is not a low cost 3D printer anymore. Definitely, the cheap Chinese kits still haven't been on price. But it has every other com commercial 3D printer destroyed on price. Which is really important because I firmly believe that a 3D printer shouldn't be too different to that. Not the CNC machine. The inkjet printer. Do you expect your inkjet printer to break down every five seconds? You have to rip apart the guts to actually make it print pages these days? No. But yes, keep in mind that early Xerox machines did come fitted with a fire extinguisher because they were at risk of catching fire. Things progress forwards in terms of usability and affordability. And the Mark III is a huge step towards making a 3D printer that's affordable, that's more of a creative tool, rather than a 3D printer just as a hobby. And that's what I'm all about. So I do wish Joseph the best of luck with selling the Mark III. Like he said in the interview, he's still going to be selling the Mark IIS, alongside it and that you know the the multi-material upgrade is probably not going to come to the mark 3 for some time but look if you are after a desktop 3d printer with all the bells and whistles that actually make sense yeah i'm pretty impressed so that's going to do it for this video guys hope you enjoyed watching and i look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on maker's muse catch you later guys bye
ran or sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. 